Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. This week, we're going to talk about death. It's going to be a big one. I think you're going to like it. This is a podcast style show, so I've got my notes here. And we're going to take a huge topic and break it down over the next five episodes. So make sure you stick around for all of them. We're going to talk about what happens after you die, what happens to your body after you die, and also whether or not we're ever going to beat that scythe-wielding bastard. But first, we have to know, how do you even know that you're dead in the first place? In 1899, in New York State, all, mor all mortuaries, all of them, were required to maintain a room where apparently dead people were kept for a little while, for a certain time, as it was said, to help prevent premature burial. So if they thought you were dead, because that's actually kind of tough, they would put you in this room. And if you woke up, then you wouldn't get buried, which, yay. But if you didn't, then they assumed that you were dead. That was also the purpose of a wake and a viewing and taking time to make sure that you were prepared for death and everyone could come see you. Part of that was so that you wouldn't bury a person alive. Because the history of not having dead people who they thought were dead is really big. <laughs> it happens a lot. In, in history. And sometimes they would end up burying a person alive. It happened. So I found a couple of really good examples. In 17th century Scotland, Marjorie Halcrow Erskine was buried alive. She was presumed dead, obviously. Grave robbers had been following the funeral and they went to the casket to steal her jewelry. Fairly common. They were about to cut off a finger on her hand where she had a ring on her finger and she moved <laughs> and they freaked out and they ran away. Uh, she woke up in a casket and walked home and was like, hey, I'm not dead. And she lived long enough to birth and raise a family. So she was definitely not dead. But there's no real medical way in the 17th century to determine death. It was just, oh, you know, Marjorie hasn't moved in a while and she doesn't seem to be breathing. She's probably dead. In 1915, S.E. Dunbar, South Carolina, similar issue. She actually collapsed after an epileptic fit. She was put into a casket for burial, and her sister, who lived far away, had to travel to where the funeral was. She was buried, and the sister arrived during the funeral and demanded that the grave diggers uh, take the casket back out so she could pay her respects. When they pulled the casket out, her sister sat up in the casket and said, oh, hey, what's up? It's true. I mean, mostly true. In 1937, Angelo Hayes in France, this one is crazy. He got in a motorcycle accident where he went over the handlebars and his face smashed into a brick wall. He was so disfigured that they couldn't do a viewing. There was no discernible pulse on Mr. Hayes. So three days later, they buried him, like you do. He got in a motorcycle accident. The insurance company came and they said, okay, you need to exhume him so we can examine him, make sure, you know, that we, about this claim. That was two days after he was buried. So he had been dead for five days. Turns out he was in a coma and he was still alive. He just hadn't needed that much oxygen. So these stories happen a lot. This is just three examples and there are, believe me, hundreds. If you have any that you want to talk about, go down into the comments. Make sure you leave them down there. These stories are super interesting. So these three stories, though, all come down to kind of the same thing. You can't visibly see somebody living, right? It's, it's a measure of breath. It's a measure of pulse. And that's pretty much what you got. That's about all that you have. Uh, and that's actually not a good measure for death. How do we define dead legally is that's actually a little more of an art than a science. People are trained to do these things because people die in a number of different ways. When you think of Angelo Hayes hitting a wall, then yeah, he's probably dead. But it turned out that's not enough, just assuming that he's dead from this crash. So maybe an easier way to tell if someone's dead, decapitation. That person is probably dead. That's easy. Disembowelment, blood loss, major injury. Those are the easy ways. Hard ways are things that don't leave those easy physical marks like poison or sleep. People who die in their sleep. People who die of old age. People who die of sickness. These non-injurious ways make it very difficult to determine whether or not someone is dead. 
On top of that, there are times when people can't find a pulse on another person, and that makes it even more difficult. Some older folks have shallow heartbeats, may breathe shallowly, and maybe they're dead. You don't know. So later on, as medical technology advanced, we started to measure not just the pulse and do it electronically so we could detect even faint pulses, but also we started looking at brain activity. And there are very strict criteria for brain death. On TV, you know, you're watching it and they have these monitors and they look really pretty with all sorts of colors and it's like, oh, he's dead. I can tell because look, his brain waves aren't brain waving. But there is very strict criteria for death. You can find it online. Uh, brain death, by the way, is the irreversible cessation of all functions of the entire brain. You actually need two doctors to confirm that brain death has happened. You can't just have one guy stand in the room and be like, nope, you're dead. You gotta bring in another lady and be like, hey, I think that his, this, this person is brain dead. What do you think? There's also vegetative states, there's comas. All of these things are different and the body behaves differently with each of them. So vegetative state doesn't mean brain death. People will react to things physically. They may even yawn, react to pain, but they are not technically alive, but they're also not technically dead, right? There's a lot of of gray area here. Usually when someone is determining if a patient or another person is dead, they'll first use their stethoscope, the classic doctor move. They'll listen for breathing and a pulse. They could also do an electrocardiogram or EKG that could show electrical activity in the heart. That's the thing that when you think of in medical technology is sort of like a seismograph, it looks like. You know, it's a needle on paper and that's tracing those lines of the electrical activity in the heart. Then there's the electroencephalogram or EEG and that's brain activity. That detects electrical activity in your brain. And all of these things can be used to determine if you're dead, but even those things have all been fooled because sometimes people just ain't dead. However, if you are dead, <laughs> the first thing that's gonna happen is you're going to be proclaimed dead and then they're gonna fill out a US standard death certificate, which is issued, funnily enough, by the CDC. The CDC's National Center for Health Statistics has the standard death certificate, and states can make up their own, but most people or most states use this one. It asks your age, your race, your gender, your education, the time and place of death, and this is the most, the most valuable part, the documentation of the cause and manner of death, which in itself is super confusing. If you think about death, people can screw this up really easily. Part one would be the sequence of events that led up to that death. So in the case of Angelo Hayes, he was riding a motorcycle. But it could also be medical history. So possible events that caused that sequence. That's part two of this cause of death. And that can be hours or days or weeks or months before. Maybe he was in the hospital, a different hospital months ago, and he had something wrong with him. And you might not know that. So all of these things determine whether or not you're dead, and it turns out death is kind of a gray area. So death is pretty human. So tell me what you think about death down in the comments. What do you think happens next? Assuming that you are dead, what happens then? For more Test 2 Plus, subscribe so you can find out tomorrow when we talk about what's gonna happen after you die. And also, if you can't wait that long, make sure you check out last week's episodes, which you can find pretty easily on our channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.